Marty Leon, an interventional cardiologist from Columbia University and New York Presbyterian Hospital, and the co-principal investigator in the Partner 3 trial. And my name is Mike Mack. I'm a cardiac surgeon at Baylor Scott & White in Dallas, and I'm privileged to be a co-principal investigator of the Partner 3 trial along with uh, Marty. We're here at the American College of Cardiology 2019 uh, in New Orleans where we are presenting the results of the Partner 3 trial. The Partner 3 trial is the latest in a series of uh, five partner trials that have used de-escalating risk uh, to define patient cohorts for study trials. There have been um, previous randomized trials in inoperable patients, high risk patients, intermediate risk patients, and now this is the Partner 3 low risk trial which randomized 1,000 patients between uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement with the Edwards Sapien 3 valve uh, and surgical aortic valve replacement. It was a one-to-one -one randomization of 1,000 uh, patients, and Marty will be presenting uh, the results of this trial uh, on Sunday. So I'm not gonna hold you in any suspense. Let me give you the top line primary endpoint results. The primary endpoint was a composite of death, any stroke, or patients that had to be rehospitalized for serious conditions within the first year after the index procedure. For surgery, there were 68 patients who had a primary endpoint event, which is an event rate of 15.1%. For TABR, only 42 patients had a primary endpoint event. This fulfilled both the non-inferiority hypothesis with a p-value of less than 0 0.001, and the hazard ratio was 0.54, which meant a 46% reduction in the primary endpoint event, such that the log rank p-value was equal to 0 0.001. So it met both the non-inferiority and superiority criteria. All of the components of the primary endpoint strongly favored TAVR as well and several pre-specified secondary endpoints. From a patient's perspective, TAVR took about an hour to perform. 65% uh, of the patients did not have general anesthesia. Most didn't even go to an ICU, but went directly to a floor. The average hospitalization was two or three days. Um, uh, and these patients were generally sent home or to self-care, 96% of the um, TABR patients. And within the first month, they had a dramatic improvement in all functional indices of health status. So TAVR has come a long way from the standpoint of results now in this newest low-risk patient population. So there's important uh, limitations to the trial. First of all, the primary endpoint of the trial uh, is one year. Uh, so that doesn't answer questions of durability, which is appropriate to raise. However, all patients will be followed annually for 10 years, both surgical valves and TAVR valves, so we will know absolute structural valve deterioration of both types of valves over a 10-year period of time. Uh, the second is that this trial was performed by uh, experienced operators in experienced institutions, and so it remains to be seen whether these results are scalable uh, to uh, less high-volume institutions. Third is there were important uh, exclusions associated with this trial, such as you had to be able to have the valve placed by transfemoral access. You couldn't have a bicuspid valve, and there are some important anatomical exclusions. That being said, the robust evidence base that has been uh, generated by the series of partner trials over the past decade uh, has clearly informed uh, practice uh, and uh, shared decision-making uh, for patients. So Marty, final word? Yeah, I would conclude by saying that this is no longer a new procedure. We've been doing this now for 17 years. The technology has improved and stabilized. The procedure has become fairly routine. And these results really should empower patients and referring doctors because it allows us to say that we can have a dialogue with patients about TABR versus surgery, not based upon some arbitrary surgical risk criteria, 
but based upon clinical and anatomic factors, understanding and respecting patient preferences, and also being able to explain risks, benefits, um, uh, uh, and knowledge gaps that we have. 